Hi, welcome back. I'm Jonathan McGrew and this is Real Auto Reports and today we have the 2013 Lexus ES350, the real video, the real review, and we're going to go in depth on this car and give you all the details we think you need to know when you're looking at maybe buying one for you, your family members, or well, anyone really. So let's hit the road, get in the driver's seat and get going. All right, so welcome back. We are in the 2013 Lexus ES350. This is similar and, and actually optioned very similar to the 300H that we've also reviewed here at Real Auto Reports. This is the real video, the real review, and we're gonna hit the road here and see what details we can tell you about this car. First of all, it's not a hybrid, so there are gonna be some differences because it's a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6. So let's get going. All right, so first things first, this is the 3.5 liter V6. This is a 260 horsepower V6 motor, and indeed is where they get the ES350 from. So the difference is really from the 300H to this is that it doesn't have the hybrid powertrain. So what we're going to see is a 21 mile per gallon city and a 31 mile per gallon highway fuel economy rating from the EPA. The combined cycle where it's city and highway, you're gonna find that it is 24 miles per gallon. So all in all, not bad for this mid to full size uh, luxury sedan. The price tag also is a little bit different than the hybrid. It's a $46,000 car as tested, so $46,004 if you want to be exact. I need to get this out of the way right away. This car has an option the hybrid doesn't, the panoramic sunroof. I love panoramic sunroofs. They let a lot of light in the car. However, this has a manual kind of accordion slider. And I have to reach all the way back here to do the same thing in the back. So that, there are new Kias, the Nissan Maxima, most cars in this, this segment, and even indeed under $40,000 have power sunshades for these panoramic roofs. That really is a disappointment in this car, but I don't want it to temper the entire review because the ES is an interesting vehicle. It really is this kind of middle of the road, more mid to full size car for Lexus. It has some nice luxury features, like it does have um, the memory seats on both sides for driver and passenger. It does have your trip display with all of the fuel economy and all of that stuff. You've got full navigation in this car. This car has the ultimate luxury package, which is where part of that memory seat comes from. And it's also got the really nice perforated leather, the heated and ventilated or cooled front driver seats, both sides. Now, one thing on those, and I noticed this in the new IS that we, when we were doing our real first impressions, these blowers are pretty loud when you have it turned up all the way. And you'll actually be able to, if nothing else is on in the car like it is right now, you would be able to hear those blowers on when you start the car up or when you're sitting in it. Um, it it's just some, some background noise, but not bad. I mean, for cooled seats in, in 95 or so degrees, it's 91, the car says today, we'll take the cooled seats any day. But it's interesting that you can hear the blowers so well in, in, in the Lexus models. I noticed it in the new 2014 IS as well. I do like the touches in this car. I think the interior of the ES is better than it's ever been. The 2013 model has nice touches like the analog clock that most of the Lexus have, even the GSs that we have reviewed. I like the wool, the wood steering wheel. Um, again, it is heated and you reach down here in the center console to heat the steering wheel in this model but only here is gonna be heated because that's where the leather wrap really is and that's where they can heat the wheel. So one of the things that is interesting about this car is it's got some pick and choose features. It doesn't have power folding mirrors. There's a new Kia that we're gonna you know, hopefully get in the future here that just came out that's in that mid $35,000 range. Power folding mirrors, power sunshades, and uh, you know, for $35,000, yes, I know it's a Kia and not a Lexus, but you have to start looking at that value proposition because Lexus used to be that. It used to be the Hyundai and Kia on the market back, you know, 20 years ago. 
So what I'm looking at here is I love that it's got the push button start. I love that it's got the power or, well, actually I should say automatic, they're always power, but the automatic rain sensing wipers, but that is, you know, like a $500 option. This does have the automatic trunk close, open and close like our hybrid version did that we tested. And again, that's another four or $500 option. So, you know, it's interesting that the Ultimate Luxury Package doesn't include all of that. And the Ultimate Luxury Package itself is like $3,200 plus dollars. So this car base would have been around 36. You can tell it's been optioned up 10 grand with the options on it. It's got 17 inch wheels, which is all right, but you know, the wheels have been getting bigger and bigger over the years. So 17 is really a base size anymore, but it's a good looking car. It has the spindle grill. And I mean, it is a Lexus for, and you know, it's got all that Honda feel to it. Honda, look at me. It's a Lexus and it's got that Toyota feel. That's a flub, folks, so you can uh, comment and, and kick me in the butt later. But yes, it's a Lexus, and it's got that Toyota feel to it, that Toyota quality. It's like the nicest, uh, well, it's bigger than a Camry, so it's more like the Avalon in, in a way. It still doesn't fit either of those categories, really, because it is a nice car in the ES. It's just a, it's an odd car now, because with the GS is luxurious, and aggressive and sporty and with the hybrid option in the GS, that's that's quickly become one of my favorite cars that Lexus produces, even over something like the flagship LS460. When you're talking about driving the ES, things change a little bit. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we're driving in the ES and what I can tell you about the ES is that it is front wheel drive, so it's not gonna be sporty. This is really mid to full size luxury. That is its key. So keep that in mind when you're thinking ES, it's luxury. The GS is where you're gonna get more of your sporty feeling. And indeed with the F Sport GS, you can really get that sporty package feeling. And if uh, you know they come out with a, a, a GSF or something like the ISF, then you're really gonna get that sporty feeling. This ES has good steering, it's smooth. I think smooth and quiet is the key in the ES. It is a lovely car to drive. It's a lovely car to take people around in. It's got good rear passenger room, good front passenger room. Now, what I did notice is that the ES doesn't have, in the hybrid or this car, it does not have the split and wider screen that the new GS does. And indeed, even cars upper end like the LS460 that we've looked at in pre-production. So what that means is that you're sort of in a, a middle ground here with the ES. You still have a nice color screen. It's still controlled by the same joystick that you're used to. You've still got dual climate control. This has power rear shade for the pa rear passengers and then manual side shades because it does have that luxury package feature. It is a great car. It's, uh, it's a car that I think is one of those cars where you say, okay, I am not compromising because I want a Lexus. I don't want to pay the 60 plus thousand dollars it might take me to get to a GS because I don't need all of that. But I want something reliable, comfortable, quiet, smooth, that still has good power. At 268 horsepower, this 350 will get up and move. And one of the big differences in the driving experience is that it is a six-speed transmission, not a CVT like the hybrid. So yes, you're gonna get less mileage. You're gonna get 21 and 31 out on the highway, so 21 in the city. But that's not bad for this kind of car with these kind of features in the, the nice leather interior. So that's the real video, the real review of the 2013 Lexus ES350. As we kneel here on our quick stand, 
shameless product placement for our friends over at QuickStand. Visit their Facebook. But we like it because it lets us kneel in front of all these cool cars. So Lexus has done a really nice job with this car at positioning it between the IS and the GS. The thing is, is that it really is all about comfort. It's not a performance car from Lexus. So it's not the IS, it's not the GS, but it is a great middle of the road, mid to full size luxury car that has a lot of nice features. This has the ultimate luxury pack that we mentioned with the memory seats on both sides, the heated and cooled seats, or ventilated if you prefer. It has good power coming from the 3.5 liter. And as we said in our 300H review, if you want the economy part of it, you can look at the 300H review. This is a little less expensive and will still get you 24 miles per gallon combined, which I think out of this size sedan is not bad. Now, at $46,000, it is a little bit higher than other value-oriented cars like the Sonata, the new Kia. That car, that's $35,000 with all the luxury options. You also have the Nissan Maxima that comes in under 40 or right about 40 fully loaded. So there's, And then there's the Dodge Charger that's on our YouTube channel, and that's an all-wheel drive max top of the line that tops out just above 40. And so you've got a lot of options here, but if you're looking for the Lexus legacy, the customer service, and all of the service perks, like where they come and get the car and service it for you in the loaner car program, and you want the cachet of the Lexus brand, the ES is a good sized vehicle and a good price point to get into the luxury brand. So we think they're doing a good job. We like the spindle grille. We like the fact that they've updated the interior and it's probably the nicest ES that we have seen in a long time. And we hope they keep it up and they fix that sunroof problem because that accordion manual thing just ain't gonna work. For Real Auto Reports, I'm Jonathan McGrew and we'll see you down the road. <music>